All right, sixth grade, we're continuing on in our chapter of connecting fractions, decimals, and percents. Three parts to what you're going to be doing in your assignment today. This first part, you're going to get a table like this. It has a column for fractions, a column for decimals, and a column for percents. And then it's got a row. And this row has the fraction 16 over 25. It's your job to find the equivalent decimal and to find the equivalent percent. Well, we're going to talk about it, but to be able to make a decimal and a percent, we know that a percent is out of 100. And we know that decimals, the place values are tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So that tells me that I'm going to have to make a fraction over 100. Well, I know that 25 times 4 is 100. So to fi find the, the equivalent fraction, I'm going to have to do 16 times 4. You may have to do a little bit of scratch work there. That's not hard. 16 times 4. 16 times 4 is 64. And so 64 hundredths. Now the fractions, when you find these two, the fractions will have to be in simplest form. That's why, but we had to change this one, but we do have the original fraction in simplest form. This is 64 over 100, or 64 hundredths, which is a decimal, is going to be written as 0.64. Now, as we learned yesterday, to take a decimal and turn it into a percent, it's like I'm multiplying by 100. So if I were to move the decimal, 1, 2, my decimal would be right there after the 4. And that tells me that the equivalent percent is 64%. Now, in this row, it gives me the decimal of 78 hundredths. Well, I'm going to be able to pretty straightforward, like I did, to turn the decimal into a percent once, twice. The decimal is going to go right there after the 8. That tells me that the equivalent percent is 78%. But then I have to turn it into a fraction. Well, I know that this is 78 hundredths, okay? So I can start by writing 78 over 100. Now, as we said, this fraction that we put here has to be in simplest form. I know from my rules of divisibility uh, that this ends in 8, this ends in 0. Thus, th these are both even numbers, which means they are divisible by 2. So if I divide them both by 2... Once again, I might have to do a little scratch work, but we've done division. If you were to work out 78 divided by 2, you would find that that would be 39. And if you did 100 divided by 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Add the 0. I get 50, 39 over 50. And I can check to see if that's in simplest form, and sure enough, it is. Because the only number that can go into both 39 and 50 is one. There are other numbers that can go into 39, there are other numbers that can go into 50, but the only number that can go into both is one. So my equivalent fraction is 39 over 50. Well this last one now I have 41 percent, so now I'm just doing just the opposite. When I take a percent and turn it into a decimal, remember I would envision my decimal as being right there. If I move it once, I move it twice, to the left, because when I'm doing just the opposite, I'm dividing by 100, I would end up with decimal 41, or 41 hundredths, which is what 41% is, 41 out of 100. Now, when I turn this into a fraction, 41 hundredths, once again, I can start with 41 over 100. But when I look at this one, I notice that this already is in simplest form. As a sixth grader, I know my times tables, and I know 41 does not show up as an answer. In my basic multiplication facts, the only way I get 41 is if I'm using fractions or decimals, or I just do 1 times 41. So the only number that can go into both 100 and 41 is 1. So this one would be, in simplest form, is 41 over 100. So that's going to be the first part of your assignment today. You're going to be given a table. And you're going to be given either the fraction, the decimal, or the percent. And you're going to have to fill in the other two, the equivalent forms. Next part, circle the greater number. Now here in this section, you're going to get some sort of combination, either a decimal and a percent, or a fraction and a percent, or a decimal and a fraction, or whatever the case may be. 
And so you're gonna have to kind of change one to match the other so you can actually compare them. Now in this one, 8 tenths and 85%, I'm gonna think, well, okay, I know how to turn a percent into a decimal. And that's just by taking the decimal and going once, twice, filling that empty, or sorry, I'm turning a decimal into a percent by multiplying by 100, move the decimal two places to the right, I see well that the equivalent percent is 80%, because now my decimal is here when I move it twice. Well, 85% is bigger than 80%. So I would circle the 85%. When I look at this one, number two, 27 over 50 or 27%, which is greater? Well, remember what I do with percent. Percent means per hundred. So if I want to find what this percent is, I can make it as a fraction over 100. Now I know that 50 times two is what equals 100. So to find this numerator here, I'd have to do 27 times two. 27 times two, you might have to do, do a little bit of scratch work, but that's not hard. 27 times two would work out to be 54. And I find that that's 54 over 100. Well, 54 over 100 is 54%. So I know that 27 over 50 is 54%. Okay, equals 54 percent, 54 over 100. That tells me that the 27 over 50, which is equivalent to 54 percent, is greater than 27 percent. So I'm going to circle 27 over 50. Last one in this section, which is bigger, 97 thousandths or 97 percent? Well, once again, I'm going to take a decimal and I'm gonna turn it into a percent by multiplying by 100, which is moving the decimal twice to the right, and I end up with 9.7. I find that this is nine and seven tenths percent. Well, that is not as big as 97%. So 97 thousandths is smaller than 97%. This is the bigger number. That's the one I'm circling. All right, last part, different way of doing the same thing. Order the numbers from least to greatest. Order the numbers from least to greatest. I've got 38%, eight over 25, 41 hundredths is a decimal. So you're gonna get some combination of fractions, decimals, and percents. You're gonna have to put them in order from least to greatest. Now, sixth graders don't get these wrong because you accidentally put them in order from greatest to least. Make sure you're doing the smallest first, building up to the greatest. Now, once again, just like we did on the previous section, to be able to compare them, we need to turn them all into the same thing. And I'm gonna be quite honest with you, sixth graders, I'm gonna be right up front. If you get a fraction where the denominator easily works with 100, the best plan for you is going to turn be is to turn everything into uh, a fraction, or to turn it into a percent, or a fraction over a hundred, which is essentially a percent. All right, because you don't want to worry too much about simplest form, but if you you can either do a fraction over one hundred, or just as a percent. We already have a percent, so we're going to keep that the same. Thirty-eight percent. I see my 41 hundredths. I know to turn a decimal into a percent. I move the decimal once, twice to the right, which means my decimal would be there, which means that this would be 41 percent. Eight over 25 to make that a percent has to be over 100. That's gonna be times four which means I'm going to have to do 8 times 4. 8 times 4 is 32. That's 32 over 100, or 32%. So I know that this is 32%. I know that this is 38%. And I know that this is 41%.
So if I'm putting them in order from least to greatest, that tells me that eight over 25 has to come first. And when you put them in order from least to greatest sixth grade, you have to put the original numbers. Don't put a new percent or a new decimal. You have to put the original number. Since this is just 32%, eight over 25, that's going to come first. And that's my first number. That's gonna be followed by 38%, which is less than 41 hundredths, which is 41%. So I'm gonna follow that up with zero and 41 hundredths, all right? Let's look at the next one, 44 over 50, 83 hundredths, 5 eighths, 84%. Once again, we wanna see if the fraction will work over 100, because then it's easy to turn things into a percent or a fraction over 100. Well, 50 will, but eight won't. So the next best plan then is to turn everything into a decimal. That's already a decimal, 84%. If I move the decimal twice to the left to turn a percent into a decimal, remember you divide by 100, which is to move the decimal twice to the left. That will give me 84 hundredths. 44 over 50. If I take 44 over 50, and since my one, since my hundredths is a decimal place value, I can do 50 times two which means I need to do 44 times two to find this number here. I find that 44 times two is 88, 88 hundredths, which is equivalent to decimal 88, 88 hundredths. The only thing now, and I can kind of put a little arrow there so I don't forget it. The only thing now is five eighths. I've got to turn that into a decimal. Well, to turn a fraction into a decimal, I simply divide. We've talked about that before. Remember a fraction, all a fraction is, is a division problem. You're getting to the point now in your math life, sixth grade, where you need to understand that when you see a fraction, it essentially means division. So this is five divided by eight. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do five divided by eight. Well, I know that eight can't go into five so I have to add a decimal zero and put that decimal straight up. Eight can go into 50 six times. Six times eight is 48. 50 minus 48 is two. I cannot end up with a remainder. So I'm gonna put a zero, bring that down. Eight I think can go into 20 two times. I believe that two times eight is 16. And I'm pretty sure that 20 minus 16 is four. Still can't end up with a remainder, so I have to put another zero, bring it down. Remember, adding all these zeros does not change the value. It's still just five. Eight can go into 40 five times, and as a sixth grader, I should be confident that there are none left over because I should know that eight times five is 40. So I end up with 625 thousandths. So this one is 625 thousandths. All right, well, so now I want to put them in order from least to greatest. Well, when I look at all these decimals, this is an eight. That's an eight in the tens place. That's also an eight in the tens place, but this one is a six. So that one to me should clearly come first, which means that my first number should be five over eight because I need to put the original number. Now this one has a three in the hundredths place as opposed to a four or an eight. So my original number was 83 hundredths. So I can just put 83 hundredths. Now 84 hundredths is less than 88 hundredths because the four is less than the eight. The original number was 84%. So that comes next in my order. And then the biggest number, the 88 hundredths, the original number was 44 over 50. So in my last one, I end up with 44 over 50. All right, we got one more to look at. Let me make that six a little bit brighter. Three and 62 hundredths, three and two fifths, 36.2%, 3.26 and 372%. Well, I've already got a couple of percents. 
and I've got a number here as a denominator five that will work well with 100. So I'm gonna make everything a percent. So I'm gonna keep 36 and 2 tenths percent the same. I'm gonna keep 372 percent the same. I'm gonna take this decimal, I'm gonna move it twice to the right, and I see that the decimal goes there. So that's gonna be 326 percent. I come over here, I see a decimal here. I'm gonna move it once, twice to the right, because to turn a decimal into percent, we multiply by 100 or move the decimal two places to the right. So that gives me 362%. This three and two fifths, I'm not worried about the three right now, but I wanna take the two fifths and figure out what that is over 100. Well, five can go into 10 twice. There's none left over, I put that zero. So that tells me that five times 20 equals 100. So I'd have to do two times 20 to get that other number. Two times 20 is 40. So that tells me that two over five is equivalent to 40 over 100, which is 40%. But I have the three whole parts here, which is 300%. So this three and two fifths, Put a little arrow here, we're getting crammed for space, but you see the importance of staying organized, 340%. So now I'm thinking, okay, well I've got 362%, 340%, 36.2%, 326%, 372%. Well, they're all 300 except this one. So I'm gonna say that 36.2% should come first. And then, well, I've got 300, 300, 300, 300. Well, I see here 300, a two in the tens place, a seven in the tens place, a four in the tens place, and a six in the tens place. So that tells me that this one has to come next, 326%, but the original number is 3.26 followed by this one that has a four in the tens place, 340%, but the original number is the mixed number, three and two fifths. So that takes care of all of that. 372%, 362%. This one is definitely smaller because the six is less than the seven. The original number is three and 62 hundredths. So I'm gonna put that and then that's going to be followed by our last one here. And I'm just going to write it over here. 372%. It's not hard sixth grade, but it is about keeping organized. Stay organized. Do it the way that we're going to do it in your notes. You'll be just fine. All right. Talk to you later, sixth grade. Bye.